This is your Tascam DR100 Mark II Portable 2-Channel Linear PCM Recorder. Um, you can get these at the equipment cage just by asking for the Tascam Mark II Recorder. It's an excellent uh, field recorder that you can take out on the field or in the studio or on location um, to do any kind of recording that you want to do, whether it's wild or actually synced to the picture. You can do double system uh, dialogue. You could do all kinds of sound effects that actually are recorded at the same time as you're uh, filming with the, either the Canon 5D or uh, the T3i or the P40s and P150s. It takes an SDHC memory card, class 10. It's probably your best bet. And you could either get a 16 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte card to go with uh, your recording system. Okay, to install the card in the Tascam, what you're going to do is look at the top and there's a little flap. So you want to open that and basically insert the card and it clicks and then close this. To charge up the internal battery you have the USB connection here and then you can plug your USB cable right into the side of the computer which will power a charge right in to charge the internal battery of the Tascam Mark II. Or you can use an adapter like for your iPhone and plug it into the wall unit to charge off of that. Or you could purchase a Tascam um, charging unit. Um, when you're actually charging the unit you'll see this little red light go on here where it says charge. And once it's charged that light will go off. So if you want to have uh, spare power, you could bring um, some batteries along. I personally like the uh, rechargeable type because you can use these over and over again, but regular AA batteries will also work. Um, I want to point out, though, that you don't need to have batteries if you're using the internal battery of the Tascam and you've charged it. Um, but if you did want to use them, this is where they go in the back of this Tascam. If you didn't have a chance to charge up your batteries, you can just go to the drugstore and buy some double A's. You might want to get a 12 pack because I think they're, they're going to be used up pretty quickly. Notice it goes plus in one direction and minus in the other, so make sure you get it lined up properly to get your um, batteries installed. Um, so on the side of the Tascam is the power switch to turn on the system and you hold that down and then it will illuminate the dial and you can see it loading up uh, sometimes it will give you an error message asking you to format the card if the card is not ready to be formatted and in that case you would just press the enter mark here and say yes that would be that you were sure that, that your card didn't have other things on it that you wouldn't mind having erased one of the nice things about the Tascam is its versatility because you could either have uh, a, an XLR coming in uh, where you're going from a boom mic or you could have a lavalier or radio mic um, as part of your double system with the camera. Um, or you could use uh, the Omni mic or the Uni mic that comes with the recorder itself that's actually installed on the recorder. But it's really good to know the difference between them. Um, because the uh, uni mic, which is this mic, is superior to the omni mic. So if you were to have this set on the wrong setting, you might make a mistake and record off the omni mic when you meant to be on the uni mic or the XLR. So it's important to point out, though, that according to Fred Ginsberg, who's a professional audio recordist, and his chart, um, the, the first priority would be to record uh, your scene with boom technique of with an overhead boom. Um, and then I would think that for consistency throughout the film you would replicate that by continuing to use the boom which would require you to come in on the XLR. So we'll start with that. So you can see on the base of the recording unit uh, you have either a line or mic input here and this needs to be switched to mic if you're using a mic in on these XLRs as opposed to line level. So if you have it set to line level and you're recording off of a mic, you're not going to have the right signal coming in. So be sure to switch this to mic level when you're recording off of a microphone. 
uh, then you'll plug your XLR cable into the bottom of the recording unit. Okay, so this is the back of the Tascam, and going from left to right, we have the mic gain, which I keep in the middle. Um, it's low, medium, or high as three possible positions for this. Um, I like the middle position because low is a little too low, and H will distort uh, generally. It's, it sounds very bad. Um, here we have phantom power off or on. Right now it's in the off position. That's because we're using a Sennheiser mic coming in through the XLR cable. Um, and it has its own power, so it doesn't need to draw power off of the Tascam. However, if we were using um, my lavalier mic, which also comes off the XLR, we would have the switch to the on position. And, uh, and in the on position, then fa phantom power is on, which will actually power the mic through the input jack of the mic. Next we have the auto limiter, which should always be in the off position. And finally the speaker is turned off. It's important to point out that it's good technique to use your headphone jack and plug in your headphones so that you can listen to the recording while you're recording it. And there's a level adjustment here uh, that lets you change the, the level of the signal. But, so then the next thing to do is to make sure it's set on the XLR setting <clears throat> After getting that set, the next thing you want to do is to set your, your level, your recording level. And you can use this dial. It has a, a different one for the right or left channel. And I generally have to keep this up to 10, uh, depending if I'm coming in from a mixer or from the source. If I'm coming just off of a microphone, it generally needs to be on 10. Um, and what you want to do is to uh, press the record button. So when you're ready to test your audio levels, you can press the record button and it will blink. That's while you're setting your record levels. When you got them set properly, then you can click play. Notice it stops blinking. So when you see a solid red illumination of coming from the record button. That means you're in the record mode. To stop record, press the stop button. So when you're ready to test your audio levels, you can press the record button and it will blink. The idea is, is that you're going to be peaking not higher than that little triangle under the two double zeros next to the H. So this is actually a pretty good recording level. Um, and finally, uh, then what I would do is come down here and press play to start the record. Notice that the, the record is no longer blinking. Okay. So when it's recording, the light is illuminated. And if you were to pause that, it would be blinking. That means it's not recording until it's like, until you've activated the play button. And to stop, then you can just press the stop button. To eject the uh, XLR cable, there's a little button here that you push in. And when you push in, it releases the XLR cable. So it's best not to try to just pull it out. And it's best to use these little push buttons. To... Now, if you want to record using one of the, the onboard mics or line two, you could switch over from the XLR into the uni mic. If you have it in the uni position like this, uh, that would indicate that you are coming off of the uni mics. And these are your uh, ones in the little wired cage that you can see. You can see it's marked on the top. These are the uni mics. And then if you had it on the omni mics, these are the omni mics. On the top you can see there's omni mics here. And then for the line two, it's on the side of the uh, unit, which is uh, a line two input, because line one is the XLR input.
So finally, at the end, what we want to do is to, or during the shoot when, when there's downtime and we're not using the TAS cam, we want to turn it to the off position to conserve the battery. To eject the card from the TAS, TAS cam, then you're going to go back up to the top slot and you basically push on the card and it pops out and then you close it. Then to get the media off the card you can use a card reader or you can go straight into your computer. And some of the newer MacBook Pros actually have a slot right here on the side where you can just put your card straight in to transfer the media onto your hard drive. Then you need to eject it from the from the laptop. On the base there's a tripod mount so you could actually mount this on a tripod to get some nice clean sound. You can go line out from this and go line into the camera so you could actually come through and have a backup recording. And then you have line two in. If you check out our equipment at the cage we supply the uh, TASCAM and uh, you have to supply your own card and batteries. But the good news is that you can charge up the battery that's internal to the system with a USB that's uh, supplied with the unit. But you might want to leave a little time to do that. It probably takes about two hours to charge it up prior to your shoot and that lasts, I would think it would last maybe four hours or more.